from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Darren Adam. So Jeremy Corbyn's going to make two points later in terms of how he thinks we should proceed in the uh, in the entirely laudable aim, the, the aim around which we can all. Um, get the idea that we need to reduce the risk of terror. He thinks there are two strands to this. The first is to give police the funding he thinks they need. The second is to ensure foreign policy doesn't heighten the threat to the UK. 0345 6060 973. My question to you this morning, is he right to make one or both or neither of those points? 0345 6060 Nine seven three text eight four eight five zero tweet at lbc email darren at lbc dot co dot uk lots of calls from you and I will get to those but I also told you that I would uh, just report what Amber Rudd said in response I suppose peripherally at least to one of the points that Jeremy Corbyn will make about police funding uh, she has denied that cuts in police forces were a contributory factor to Monday's terror atrocity in Manchester. She was on Question Time on the BBC uh, last night and she was asked by a member of the audience um, who spoke about Theresa May having been warned by the Police Federation that cuts in frontline officers would undermine their ability to gather low-level intelligence about possible threats. She insisted, Amber Rudd insisted, the majority of the intelligence which comes in, that low-level intelligence, actually comes from community leaders operating within the PREVENT program, the Prevent Counter-Terrorism program, rather than from police officers on the streets. The actual question was, we are 20,000 police officers down, we get atrocities like this, does the government not expect this? Uh, To which Amber Rudd said, I don't accept that. I've asked the head of counter-terrorism about whether this is about resources. It is not. There may be a conversation to have about policing. Now is not that conversation. We must not imply that this terrorist activity may not have taken place if there had been more policing. So Amber Rudd is fairly clear that more police on the street would not have made a difference. That would seem to be at odds with the view expressed by you on this programme over the last couple of mornings, uh, quite specifically in some cases, that in fact you would, well, you certainly couldn't harm the case of low-level intelligence by having more police on the street, could you? You couldn't make it any worse. 03456060973 03456060973 is my number. Uh, Glenn is in Perth in Western Australia. Hi, Glenn. Uh, tailor your foreign policy to suit Islamists or face more terror attacks. Appeasement or else is how Glenn phrases that. Come on, you cannot have Islamists dictating British foreign policy. And again, I suppose that would be one of the implications, wouldn't it? If If we were to seek to reduce uh, the, the threat to, to this country by changing what we did in other countries, you can draw a line between that and what Glenn says, that it would be Islamists dictating Britain, Britain's foreign policy. 0345 973 Text 84850. Tweet at LBC. The timing of this... Actually, I, I'm OK with the timing of it, because campaigning has resumed, and it will resume... In, in, in full blood later on today. There's no question about that. We cannot pretend that this is not a very dominant issue for the vast majority of people in this country, what happened on, on Monday night in Manchester. We can't pretend that that's not what everybody's talking about. We can't pretend that everyone doesn't have a view on this. The election is less than two weeks away, and for that reason, of course, it is going to be a factor in the way that some people vote. So I don't think it is opportunistic of any politician to refer to it as part of the election campaign. It would be weird not to. 0345 Rajit is in Harrow. Morning, sir. Yes, good morning. Hi. Um, I, I think that uh, Jeremy Corbyn is simply, uh, or it appears to be the case, that he is uh, using this terrorist attack to further his pacifist, pacifist agenda. I think that the argument that Western foreign policy uh, is responsible for Islamic terrorism is completely off the mark. Uh, if this was if this was the case, you would be seeing um, Greeks bombing themselves in uh, exploding themselves in Turkey. I mean, nobody takes the invasion by Turkey into Cyprus into account. You'd see Japanese bombing the, um, b- bombing bombing the United States or, or suicide bombing. I mean, like Japan had the worst attack from the West uh, in, in the form of the Hiroshima and yeah. Nagasaki bombs. There are countless examples of countries warring with each, with each other. 
but 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 the the one common cause that unites all this terrorism together is is Islam, and this has been admitted to by by um, a prominent um, prominent well prominent a prominent um, Sunni um, person in 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 um, well. Uh, well, in, in, uh, I don't okay. want to identify it too much because okay. I'm not allowed. But there's numbers of number of uh, smart Muslims who have been uh, who have mentioned this time and time again that it is to do with the with the dog man. They have to address it. It's it's to do with a kind of eye for the eye. Now, Britain and America and Russia, it has to be said, have sunk millions and millions into countries like Afghanistan to try to civilize them, but it hasn't worked. Britain still gives huge amounts of money to Pakistan, and it doesn't seem to work. Britain still tolerates the blasphemy laws that exist in Pakistan, and it doesn't really work. So there is no real real solution, and the, the politicians are doing the smartest thing that they can overall. But having said that, they, they have this... They have this uh, incestuous relationship with countries like Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia yeah. keeps on buying their weapons. And they treat Iran like the enemy, although the Iranians, when it comes to suicide attacks, are actually far more peaceful. Well, I, th- I think the way, that we, the way that we treat Saudi Arabia, the way that we are such very good friends with Saudi Arabia, it's, it's pretty sickening, Rajit, isn't it? When you it look is at, very sickening, when, yes. when, you, when you look at the, the governing philosophy of that theocratic fascist state, in my view, yes. which is broadly the same governing philosophy of Islamic State. Well, the thing is that we have been paying, we have been putting money into their pockets for the past 100 years, and and we've been fanning the flames of of whatever that whatever that dogma is. It's been funded to the hilt by practically the whole world for the hundred years, and you can see the consequences of this now. And 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 as long as this kind of sort of very very eye tit for tat, eye for the eye kind of a dogmatism of of kind of like this kind of tribalism and uh, this apartness exists. Um, it, it, this kind of terrorism is going to carry on. It, it, it can't be stopped. All that said, and we, we agreed on a lot there, are you absolutely certain that our risk of terror attack in this country would not reduce at all if we were to stop intervening in the way that we have in, in, in other countries? Uh, well, you see, the thing is that many of these... I, I think that there's a certain point to it. I can go, go along... Go, go along with it for, to a certain point. Mm. For example, I think that getting rid of Saddam Hussein and getting rid of Colonel Gaddafi were horrible mistakes. But having said that, uh, and even getting rid of Mubarak for that matter, uh, but, having, uh, but having said that, I think that some of these wars are, are, are I mean, like, they're encouraged by certain Middle Eastern parties. Um, so it's not like they were done in a kind of vacuum of some kind of like unilateral decision by the West to go and intervene mm. in the Middle East. There are a number of um, number of tugs of war going on. For example, Saudi Arabia would like like the Western Western governments to topple Assad's regime. Um, so there's a kinds of tug, tugs of war going on, and the West has to be far more uh, independent and mm. cool-headed about exactly how they go about intervening, and they have to ha- actually have to stop. Uh, assisting countries like Pakistan and various other countries of a similar nature, mm. unless they actually stop uh, doing, I mean, like promoting things like blasphemy law and Sharia. Um, Rajid, stay there because I want you to speak to Abbas, who is in uh, Redbridge. Morning, Abbas. Uh, hi there. Uh, we've, we've got uh, we've got Rajid on the line as well. Well, I, I can't disagree more with Rajid because, unfortunately, um, I've heard Rajid's views and and people like Rajid who come on. Uh, and pretend that it is somehow all the Middle East's fault. Uh, and even the bombings that we are now doing, Rajid is saying somehow that the Middle East is complicit in sort of uh, creating that scenario as well. I mean, that's just nonsense. Is that, was that what you were saying, Rajid? It, were you, were you saying it, doesn't stand, it doesn't stand up to analytical or empirical evidence. But the evidence is, is, is actually against those types of views. Well, it's perfectly obvious that President Trump has, 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 been, has been caught in the Saudis and what the Saudis would like to do it's perfectly obvious that Iran is, uh, Iran is supporting the Assad regime and Saudi Arabia wants to topple our, our Assad. It's, that, that's a perfectly uh, empirically proven point, I think. I don't think that there's any argument about that. The point I'm making is that the West are not so gullible that because the Saudis would like us to take Iran out or take Assad out, that we'll say, oh, OK, then we'll spend billions of pounds and go on a bombing campaign and kill tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people just to keep the Saudis happy. That's nonsense. We do it because we do it to fill our own pockets. We do it because we sell arms. 
because the arms well, industry I is... Say, I did say that the West has an incestuous relationship arms, with the Middle East. The arms industry, which is our biggest export, earns hundreds of millions, if not billions of pounds from these wars. And our governments, and, it, you know, we don't have to even go very far. We can take it from the horse's mouth. Donald Rumsfeld, ad, ad, not, sorry, not Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney admitted... Mm. On the, on the London Tonight programme with Trevor MacDonald, and his exact words were, it is irrelevant as to why we went to war with Iraq. What is relevant is that it was the, in the American interests. We could not have Saddam Hussein controlling the world's largest untapped oil reserves and hold America to ransom. So it's about oil. It's about money. And it's about strategy. And, and that's what it's all about. It's about greed. And unless we address these issues, you know, if people keep talking about this elephant in the room. Well, I can see a herd of elephants rampaging through the room and nobody seems to talk about those issues. Rajit, thank you for that. Abbas as well in, in, in Redbridge on, on completely different sides of, of, of this. Uh, the question of whether what we do in other countries is a significant part of the risk uh, that we find ourselves at of terrorist attack, the sort of the, the, the likes of which we saw on um, uh, uh, on Monday in Manchester, of course. Thank you to, to both of you. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three.